What's up? It's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. Welcome to another episode of Do Your Worst. <laughs> I got a hype button. I got a freaking hype button. Thank you to my friend Christine from Christine Snaps. I finally have a hype button that I've been wanting for like months and she just had like an extra one. So she got it for me for hitting 10K because that is worth the hype, my dudes. So, hello. <laughs> I started the series called Do Your Worst where I choose a friend who ideally has opposite reading tastes as me and I read their worst books in hopes that I'll find a new favorite or in hopes that I like them significantly more than said friend did. If you haven't seen an episode of this series before, I try to do a little challenging thing that's sometimes relevant to the person, sometimes just challenging for me. For Kayla, I did a spinner wheel. For Gavin, I recreated his photos. For Brie, I cooked. Loose term, I've said this before. <laughs> and then for Kitty, I ended up watching Twilight. <laughs> so for this episode, I chose my girl Noelle from Noelle Seven Pages. If if you don't know who she is, I'll have her channel linked down below and you can, you should <laughs> subscribe because she's incredible. She just put out this video, this like passion project that she's been working on for months and months. It's now up on her channel where she read a hundred stories in a hundred days. It's so well done. Her editing is impeccable. Her personality is just everything, everything. And I chose her. The main reason is because she said she gave a two star rating to one of my favorite books of all time, which is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. If you know me, that book was like part of my brand for a while. Like when it first came out, I was obsessed with it. I'm still obsessed with it. I've only read it twice, but I own like six copies and I just love that writing style. I love the aimless wandering that everyone hates. I love like the message that that book conveyed, the storyline, the character. Yeah, I just loved everything about that book and Noelle did it. It's really fun for me to kind of hate on Addie LaRue, you know, my my pal Abby Magoo. I don't plan to ever pick up anything else from V.E. Schwab. So that's the main reason. He also hated Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, which is one of my favorite thrillers. There was a point where I was like, this might be a one star. This did not do what I wanted it to do. So many plot holes in this. This was the most unbelievable mystery I've ever read in my freaking life. None of the characters are likable. Only maybe one of them goes through any kind of tangible growth or character development at all. Let me go find that sticky note. I can't remember. Okay. Didn't like Addie LaRue. She said it was a 1.5. Gave Rock, Paper, Scissors two stars. Lovely War I also loved. Way back when, I think I read it around the time it came out. So a while ago. So I don't know if I'd still love that, but I gave it five stars at the time and she gave it one star. Just because you have Greek myths and it's not World War II, it's World War One. those two things do not make it refreshing historical fiction. The characters were vanilla at best. I did not like the ending. I did not believe in any of the romances. There was only one character that I kind of liked and I wish that I hadn't wasted my time. And then Akatar, she gave two stars and I actually loved the first book. So I figured she'd be a good contender for these Do Your Worst episodes. And for the challenge that I'm gonna do, if you follow her on Instagram especially, you'll know that she loves birds. She loves bird watching. So we're gonna attempt to get some bird footage. Maybe try to identify them, who knows? I'll probably fail miserably and everyone will make fun of me, but it's fine. A for effort, you know? I'll also be spending some time outdoors, like on my balcony at the very least. Noelle loves the summer, okay? I can never understand it because y'all know I'm an autumn girly, but she loves the summer. She lives in California. She just loves the heat. Oh, she also spends a lot of time at her pool. My apartment also has a pool, so I could spend, I'll spend one time there just reading poolside. I went into the pool once recently with Joey, like a week ago. I mean, I didn't like swim. Swimming is an overstatement. I was like up to my chin just chilling. So we're gonna do all of that this week. We're gonna end this on the 30th, like no excuses because I have another challenge thing that's going on from July 1st to the 
month. It's gonna be my YouTube 10K celebration type of video. It's a reading challenge, you'll see. I'm probably gonna fail at that, but that's a later problem. So yeah, those are things to look forward to this week. I am also simultaneously filming my spoiler-filled Lair Bloody Read vlog, where I read my buddy read with my Patreon. We call it the Lair Bloody Read, get it? Because we're vampire themed. And we're reading all's well. So if I'm like flustered or absent from this video at any time, it's because I'm also working on that one. So there's gonna be a lot. But for this video, as y'all saw, I picked out a three book TBR from a list that she messaged me on Instagram. This is not the one I'm gonna be starting with, but I have been in a witchy mood because Code Orange has begun at stores. So I've been like already Halloween shopping, which Noelle would never do. So this is very on brand, but I'll let her talk about this book. I got about 25% through, which was quite enough. And I am enthusiastically DNFing this and giving it one star. I read the ending. Where the fuck does this book go? I am so not interested in continuing reading, but like, how is there this much more of it? The ending sucks. Huge cliffhanger, which turns out they're gonna try and make this into a four book series <laughs> good luck <laughs> all right thanks noelle for your lovely insight i'm probably going to start with love in the time of serial killers because i have the audiobook and i believe it expires very soon and i have some chores to do i took a mental health day off work so i have some time this is about a girl her dad just passed away so she moves in to his house and she arrives at like 2 a.m i think and this next door neighbor tries to help her but she's very paranoid about everyone being a serial killer so i think everyone Hates this because it gets to the point where it's too ridiculous where she's just paranoid for the sake of being paranoid and like people are doing nothing to make her think they're serial killers but she's just so adamant that they are because she loves true crime and stuff so at least I'm going into it knowing to expect silliness and ridiculousness my expectations have lowered since acquiring this book this is from one of my subscribers named Kat at H thank you so much oh here we are reading it like a year and a half later I am nervous about this one but I think since my expectations have been lowered, I think I have a better chance of giving it more than one star at the very least. And then the other book I have, I already started because this was actually a Lair Bloody Read back in March and we canceled the discussion because like no one was feeling it and the audiobook is awful. So I started it, I got to page 52. Wow, farther than I thought to be honest, but that's We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I have the second book to this duology. I've had this book for so freaking long and the chapters are short so I'm excited to finally finish this and get it off my currently reading tab on Goodreads and off of our Discord channel list because I delete Lair Bloody Read channels as we finish them. This one's huge though, but hopefully it goes by quick once I'm fully in the story. Long ass intro, I'm so sorry, but I'll let you know when I have an update on this book because I will be listening to it at some point today. Hope you enjoy this vlog. Oh, Noelle's also gonna be doing her half of the vlog. And I believe she said she read some of my faves and least faves. So that's her little spin on it. Don't know when it's gonna go up. Don't know when this is gonna go up. So just stay tuned, I guess. Wanna be free of this heart, yeah. Wanna feel your arms around me. I need you more, need you here. More than I would like to admit. Let's forget about tomorrow. Yeah. Should I hide away? Hello. We are back. It's a new day. I hope this is the right SD card. I did not update yesterday. I'm sorry, but I did read 54 pages of Love in the Time of Serial Killers, and then I'm about halfway through now, actually. I've decided I'm only listening to it. I was gonna annotate. This is probably gonna be one of the few books that I own that I'm not annotating, just for the sake of saving time, but I already know that I'm liking this more than Noelle, because it's not feeling like a one star. I think the main thing is that I went into it knowing to expect that this woman is just gonna be borderline, just a little too paranoid. It really didn't last too long. I mean, we're halfway through and she is fully into the guy now. I mean, it says she realizes that Sam is a genuinely nice guy who can pierce her armor to reach her vulnerable heart in the synopsis. So we're at that point. I feel like it didn't take too long. Like People made it sound like throughout the whole book, everyone she meets, she's like, oh, they're a serial killer. Oh, yep, 
Yep, but no. I actually really enjoy the commentary when she talks about her dissertation and her research and everything and explaining to people who ask about it, like Sam, when she talks about how the perspective on serial killers has evolved over the years and why we're so fascinated by them. And then she mentions a lot of true crime books and documentaries that I have either read or are interested in. I've read I'll Be Gone in the Dark. I own Stranger Beside me, Helter Skelter, In Cold Blood I've been interested in for a while. She talks about all of that and I could see why Noelle, she doesn't read true crime or horror, so I could see why it appeals to me and not her. The banter is not cringy at all, honestly. She is a little bit of a pick-me girl, like she's like, oh my walls were black in my childhood bedroom, but like she's talking about it as if like, you know, she was a teenager and she's like, yeah, this was back when I wanted my walls to match my soul. So it's like kind of funny. I mean, I'm not like laughing out loud, but but there were times when I was like, hmm. there were just some like quirky parts. There's this cat that she found and she named a bookish name. They have this goldfish named Hank. Then there's also this dynamic with her little brother and she's like coming to terms with the fact that he's growing up and he's learning to love faster than she does and she's older and she's like having to wrap her head around that. Like he's out of college and he's with this serious girlfriend. So there's actually a decent amount going on. I now own three of this author's books. So I'm glad I'm enjoying. It. Now we have some merch unboxings, but first I'm gonna start with Hello Lovely Box. So as y'all know, I've been a rep for Hello Lovely Box for years now, and I have a code. My discount code is always just Jan15 for 15% off. They sent me a couple items from their Pride collection. Oh, so I got another black t-shirt, but it says Read Band Books. I have a hat that says Read Band Books, and oh, I think this is my second shirt that says Read Band Books. Oh my god, I definitely have another one too with like a Pride flag behind the words. Well, now I have two. Oh my god, there are gonna be so many sweatshirts in this haul. I haven't had a white sweatshirt in a while. This one just says love more and then it says love is love is love underneath and I just like how simple it was. I thought there was a back design but I guess not. I love this. It's so simple. And now we have my merch as well as Steph from Stephanie Bookish. She just launched merch. I'm gonna assume it's this one because I just bought a t-shirt. Yep. Look how cute. Oh, it says witchling on the back. I didn't know that until today, but like you can barely see it on the green. That's okay. If I'm not mistaken, Steph drew this herself. So super cute. Love a girl supporting girls moment. Oh, I'm so mad that it's summer. Bonfire. Let me do tie dye. Finally. I don't know if it was just like a premium option at one point, but I got tie dye options for full moon readathon. Oh my God. I love it. That is perfect. The back full moon readathon and then it says let's rock and read. I'm obsessed. I also haven't bought anything like bright red in a while so I was like okay I have to get a red hoodie and I got this design in red. It says I want to cry but I have too many books to read and I'm excited for this. I got both in a medium because I just want to drown when I'm cozying up and reading. Oh my god I forgot about this one. <gasps> wow that came out so good. I love this tie-dye and then it says the internet is freaking wild. I got like a full moon howling situation situation. Get it? Because wild. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Merch link's always down below. Okay, okay, okay. We need to sit down for this. So I am now 250 pages in to Love and the Time of Serial Killers, and I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> I did not expect to enjoy it this much. I had a feeling it would be like maybe two stars, maybe a low three, but it's looking like a four. <laughs> Depending if Phoebe gets her shit together and just stops self-sabotaging like I have done pretty much my entire life, probably why it annoys me so much, then it could potentially be four stars. I decided to annotate, by the way. I spent like half an hour this morning going back and tabbing like all the true crime moments, all my favorite moments, all the funny parts. Also, the first sex scene, I actually really enjoyed. It was tasteful. It wasn't like overbearing. It wasn't drawn out. There was a little bit of banter there, but it also wasn't fade to black. I enjoyed it. So I have less than 100 pages left, so I'm definitely gonna finish this today. I guess I'll listen to it while I'm doing dishes and cleaning up a little bit. It's Wednesday. It's my day off. I don't want to leave the apartment. I was gonna get my nails done because my birthday's next week. I really don't want to. Maybe I'll go like after work tomorrow. So I'll probably listen to that, but then I'll start physically reading We Hunt the Flame. Well, I've started it, but you know. 
pick it back up again. And then tomorrow, on my way to work, plan is to start listening to Small Town Big Magic. Or I can switch back and forth if I get bored of We Hunt the Flame at some point. I just finished my All's Well spoiler filled vlog, so now I can fully focus on this one. So that's exciting. There's a side plot with her brother and his girlfriend. I'm really enjoying that, but I saw a review that was like, I preferred their story over Phoebe and Sam's, but I really like Sam. Sam is such a cinnamon roll. Connor just feels like that little brother who's always just like everywhere, you know? I'm an only child, so can't relate. <laughs> but Sam is so freaking cute. He just wants something serious. Phoebe doesn't really at first. It's just annoying to see Sam, who's like me, who did didn't like fully get into relationships unless I saw a future with them or some sort of future. I mean, to some extent, you know, and that's him. And I just feel for him. And he's just so respectful of everything in her life. Like her dissertation, he's giving her the space she needs to work. He's emotionally respectful about like her parents' divorce, her dad's death. He's great. I'm still enjoying all the times she mentions all the true crime things. I like when she talks about her dissertation. I feel like it's done well here because I feel like in some books where there's this big project and that's all they can talk about, it gets to the point where it's kind of annoying or like it takes me out of the story, but here it actually flows well. We did have another circumstance where she thought someone was a serial killer, but it was brief. I think this might be four stars. Noelle said her half of the vlog is going really well, so I don't know what that means. That probably means that she's hating my favorites and loving my least favorites, so in that case, this experiment is going swell. <laughs> Miss Alicia Thompson knows how to write a sex scene, my dudes. She knows what she's doing. Also, you deserve to be taken care of. I can hear your brain working. <laughs> Why do I like this book so much? Why do I love this book so much? I love unexpected gems. I really thought I would hate this book. Well, good thing I own two of her other books. What the fuck? Well, like, why am I swooning squealing at how gentle Sam is in every circumstance? I love it here. Noelle, good pick. <laughs> I finished it. I'm giving it four stars. I loved it. I understand the self-sabotage. I understand her points, her feelings. Even as a 30 whatever year old, 31 year old, I think, those are still valid feelings to have. To like think you're not capable of love because of your childhood trauma. To base it on your relationship history. It's all valid. So I don't understand the people who are annoyed by her self-sabotage. I can relate. <laughs> the ending was really cute. The epilogue was cute. It did not end in pregnancy. So hell yeah, because she even said like she might not even want kids. Y'all know they get together in the end, right? But it, it's the journey. It's the journey of having true crime and serial killers and like this academia plot line woven into this romance. Then yeah, that other part of the little brother Connor story that adds to the enjoyment of the book as well. In terms of grief, I don't think it really explored too much on it. She like avoided places that reminded her of, of her dad's death and stuff and like, you know, she's living in his old house and they talk about memories with him and whatever, but I don't feel like, it's not like the dead romantics where it was like huge sections of the book just talking about grief and like, unpacking. There was this one quote that Sam said that was like, you can't extrapolate your worldview on such a small data set. That whole conversation, loved it. I just loved how their relationship unraveled. It literally started with her thinking he was a serial killer. <laughs> I feel like when this first came out, people thought that there was gonna be a serial killer involved. It was like a thrillery romance. Not gonna lie, I did too when I thought about it, but I'm not disappointed by the fact that that's like her dissertation. There were still discussions about true crime and serial killers all throughout the book. There just actually wasn't a serial killer in the story. It's not like it's marketed as a thriller. It's marketed as a romance. Like there are hearts, there's pink and red. I'm not disappointed at all. It's not five stars because I feel like 
like the ending was a little bit rushed for sure i was like wow we only have like 10 pages left what's happening i think the pacing otherwise was fine i don't know there was just something that didn't give me the five star feel i've read better romances with like more depth more characters that i really felt like i knew like to the core you know but for how short it was i mean 330 pages i feel like it did its job if this were one of those like 500 page romances and i felt this way it'd be a lower rating but four stars i am going to do a fun fact because i haven't done that in a while i keep freaking forgetting they live in florida she's from north carolina i don't want to do the obvious like on the nose fun fact about a serial killer there was a cat should i do fun facts about cats i've done that before too though Ugh, i don't want to say that because that's kind of a spoiler because that was a fun moment i've done one about paint so they were painting her dad's house there was a fourth of july moment maybe i'll do fun facts about fireworks it's so random for this book but invented by accident Chinese Many scientists are thought to have invented fireworks thousands of years ago by accidentally mixing chemicals and placing the mixture in bamboo stalks to throw into a fire. Wow. So if you were wondering how they got their colors, they're from different elements mixed with gunpowder. Barium for green, strontium for red, and titanium for white. Blue is still the most difficult color to create. Okay, I've just also been editing while listening to the last few minutes of this book, but I think I'm going to sit on the balcony before it starts to rain. I think it's supposed to rain sometime this afternoon. I'm going to read a little bit of We Hunt the Flame, get an outdoor session into this video, then I'll probably eat lunch. It's not even 11 o'clock yet. I also want to redecorate a little bit. Let's see how that goes. I'm scared it involves a hammer. Well, just kidding. My chair is wet as shit out there, so we're not doing that. I'm just gonna eat some lunch now. I have some leftover wings, and I'm gonna put Bridgerton on. Take a little reading break, pick up We Hunt the Flame after, and whenever I want to watch more Bridgerton, I'll just rough edit. It'll be fine. Okay, so I just cried and squealed and swooned over Bridgerton. Episode 5, Season 1. Favorite episode by far. Honestly, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to say it. But I'm live, laugh, loving. Anyway, I went to the package room, and my package was not in the locker. It was on the little rack, and it was opened. So I don't know how that worked out, because I still got the notification for the locker thing. So I don't know. It was these stickers, which are so Noel coded This is perfect that it's a Noel video. Well, first of all, let me read the note. It's from my girl Shay. She's one of my vampies. She has killer music taste, okay? She said, because I can, and I want to, and I love you. And this cozy little place you've made, which you call the lair, but I call home. Like, how fucking cute. But anyway, she got me this pack of Shrek stickers. If you know Noelle, she's the reason I put these on my wishlist because I was like, ooh, a Shrek theme for my journal would be cute. It's like part of her brand. Anything Shrek related, I send to her. I literally just sent her this one shirt that says cigarettes after shreks she just bought it immediately i also freaking love shrek one of the best movies ever to be honest oh my god there's a mike wazowski shrek daddy shrek <gasps> i need to send these to noel shreksy check yourself before you shrek yourself <gasps> stop everything's just so fucking funny but this meme ogre achiever shrek is love shrek is life do y'all remember that that's fucking creepy these are great shrek happens <laughs> Also, his love story with Fiona, better love story than Twilight. This is creepy. Oh my god, emo Shrek. Oh, this one's so funny. Donkey. I love it. Thank you, Shay, if you're watching. And thank you, Noelle, for the inspo. I don't know when I'm gonna... When is Noelle's birthday month? That's when I'll do the Shrek theme. This is literally <laughs> just me sitting in various parts of my apartment wherever I set my camera down, I guess. So I read a little bit more of this and by a little bit, like 20 more pages on chapter seven now. And I reread the synopsis. Basically, we have this hunter, Zafira, who is disguising herself as a man in order to feed her people, goes out to this like cursed forest. And now she has this mission from this, is it the silver witch? But basically she has to go find this thing. It's like a lost artifact. There's magic, the prize, if you will. And then we get the POV of this other person, Nasir, and he is the son of the Sultan. He's like the Prince of Death or whatever. And his mission is to bring back that prize 
to the sultan and he has to kill the hunter. No one but like Zafira's close friends, I think maybe a couple other people, maybe some family. Very few people know that she's a girl and she's doing this whole thing with being the hunter and whatever. So if any of the higher ups find out that she's a girl, then she's basically fucked. I just don't understand how this could be a duology. So I'm intrigued. I mean, I'm sure there are reasons and I don't doubt that like it warrants for a sequel. I just don't see it yet. And I'm intrigued. The chapters are really short. Hafsa Faisal loves her short chapters, but they don't get super short really until page 160, which is act two. I'm gonna try to get to at least act two by the end of today. There are 469 pages. But right now I was getting a little bit sleepy. I put workout clothes on. I'm gonna go to the gym eventually, but I think I'm gonna do this like redecorating situation first. I'll probably just show y'all the final product afterwards. Maybe do some b-roll. We'll see. I still have to also film my July releases because I haven't done that in a while and I need some easy videos because I'm doing this like 10,000 pages in 10 days challenge to celebrate 10k. So I need to be strategic about my uploads, about my social life, about my reading obviously, just like time management in general for July because it's going to be a busy fucking month with my birthday and all the activities and stuff summer ween so we're just being proactive and doing easy content but i am excited for a few july releases i should have done one for june because there were a lot that are like on my highly anticipated but alas anyway i'm gonna go now i did it now i just have to put back all of these wow i used a whole ass hammer hi it's many hours later and I haven't updated, sorry. Quite a bit has happened. <laughs> Christina and I streamed for the first time since June 1st. It's literally been 25 days. That's crazy, that's crazy. We used to stream like <laughs> five times a week. I was reading We Hunt the Flame. I got 126 pages in. So I made some pretty decent progress. I would love to still try to get to 160 though for act two. And I'm really enjoying it. Once I read the synopsis again and got a grip on what was going on, it it helped. Like, what a concept. Actually reading a synopsis. I think for fantasy, I need to really start doing that and read it word for word and not just skim the synopsis because it really does help me understand things more. So I asked Noelle what she hated about this book. She DNF'd it, I think less than 50% in is what she said. She just said she was bored. She didn't say anything was like bad to the point where she hated it. She was just bored. She felt meh about it. She didn't care for the characters. The characters felt too angsty for her. They probably just read like too juvenile, which is fine. I mean, I... I love YA fantasy because it's easier for me to understand. I don't have to work too, too hard, but I still have to work pretty hard, depending. <laughs> so she didn't even finish it and I already know I'm gonna finish it. So this is already another win for this vlog. I didn't end up going outside for anything really besides ice cream and my packages. Oh, I went to the gym. When was the last time I updated? I don't remember. The only thing with this is that they keep throwing in this language that is not translated and it's hard for some, some of them. Like it's hard even with context clues and everything, like it's hard to figure out, but it's okay. I'm getting the characters all sorted out. There's this silver witch thing going on and you get things from both main characters' perspectives so I can't wait till they come together and like face each other. I really hope it's not like a 10 page fight scene because I will throw hands. Basically they're on this mission to find this like magic book. One person's- oh I already said this earlier. I did say this. I did update earlier. Look at me go. They're starting their mission. We're just- we're just getting into the thick of it. Like they just met the witch. They got their missions and they're just starting their journey. There was a whole like goodbye moment. Oh, you know what is important though? There's this one page, page 85, that's literally Bridgerton. <laughs> like life truly imitates art. Well, I guess art imitates art, but my life- yeah, okay, bye. I'm gonna read now. Oh, this also happened. I got bored watching a movie, as always, because I have the attention span of a fucking walnut. I just reorganized all my tabs. I didn't color coordinate them. I know Katie did that and it took her all day, but I just like filled them out, emptied these. These are all my empties. That's crazy. Some of these had like four colors, you know, and I just, I consolidated. Yeah, they're all still relatively the same color palette. Y'all don't care about this. <laughs> but it's so much nicer now. And I also bought like 2,000 more, so yay. Hey, uh, I got my nails done. Look at my birthday nails. Who cares? They're black and sparkly, whatever. I got a new Java sock. They have bats on them. It's more yellow than orange, but it's fine. Put stuff in it, keeps your, what's it called? Condensation. I don't have a code. I got a little link that was like, join the family. And I was like, oh, next time. And then I never, 
fucking did it. <laughs> I have like weird energy right now. It feels like fall outside, so I'm very, I'm feeling myself. Also got this. Why is it so short? It's 352 pages. The other two were more than like 400 at the very least. I think Children of Virtue and Vengeance was like over 400. And then I think Children of Blood and Bone was almost five, almost five over five. But the thing about this is it has sprayed edges, spreadges. It's the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. She's fucking gorgeous. That is some queen shit. Like what is she gonna do? Take over the goddamn world? Probably. And I know I'm gonna show, I'm getting there. Okay, we got the red map. We got the little emblem thing on the front. But the best part is, which I've never seen before, I don't know about y'all, let me, let me turn to the title page so I don't spoil anything. The spread just go to the, to the page. Like, that's pretty cool. I get to stare at something pretty every single page. This is probably gonna be like my first book of July. I'm so excited. Also, these match unintentionally. Catch it on Instagram. I also have updates on We Hunt the Flame. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Is this is a win? This is another win. I mean, I'm not even done, but I'm already like, do I add We Free the Stars to my July hopefuls? Because I've owned the sequel for a while, but I also have the hardcover. Do I want to read that big of a hardcover? I don't know, but I love this paperback. I love how chunky it is. I love the short chapters. I understand what's going on. I love when I can understand fantasy. This is perfect for my BB well, brain. I don't understand fantasy books with the word flame in it. Fear the flames, we hunt the flame. What else? Flame, flower, whisper. <laughs> but I told Noelle, I was like, don't look at my stories if you don't want to get spoiled for my ratings and stuff. She's like, no, I don't care. And then she's like, this experiment is going so well. I am so mad though, not about this. I am so mad that I forgot my vlog camera and my planner and my medication and my lunch today. I'm mostly mad that I didn't bring my camera because I saw a fucking cardinal today. And you know who doesn't see cardinals? Noelle. She said that the West Coast doesn't get cardinals. So she was like super jealous. And I was like, wow. Didn't know I could flex about birds I see, but here we are and I'm mad because I went on a walkie walk with my HR lady and saw a cardinal and I didn't have my camera and I wasn't fast enough with my phone and it would have been weird then I would have had to explain what I'm doing and why I'm suddenly a bird watcher and it just wouldn't have boded well anyway. But no, we're gonna bring my camera tomorrow. We're gonna go to Forest Preserve and try to find cardinal because I always see one, like at least once a week. So that's gonna happen. I'm gonna sit on my balcony tonight. I'm not gonna go to the gym, even though I had soda today and I feel really gross actually. And Joey bought me some Mike's Hard and I'll probably have one and feel even grosser. No, maybe I'll save it for tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. But yeah, I'm gonna read this on the balcony. We just met another creature called a uh, dendan 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 don don when i google stuff it actually explains shit to me like the r's a r z i'm 166 pages in and i just googled it and really that's like that's the mm. It says it in the synopsis i thought i was really doing something there it says she braves the cursed forest of the r's Oh my god. And then there's this other word, dama, and I thought it was like replacement for damn, but it's replacement for like bloody. You know when you're like reading a fantasy and you just know, or any book really, and you just know you're gonna love the characters? That's what's happening. Noelle really hated the characters. She thought they were super angsty. And you know, going into YA, I kind of expected that. But like it's not even really, I'm getting wax poetic, sophisticated flirtiness banter type of vibes. I'm not getting angsty, pick me, I wear black all the time and I'm so broody and like this from uh, Gothicana. Mm. I think this is my type of angsty. Oh, I also started another book, hold on. Small Town Big Magic. This is making me understand what kind of writing style Noelle doesn't like. Not only am I finding books I like, I'm not saying I like this, because I'm really not, but I'm learning more about my friends in this series. There's so much to love about this series. But anyway, I'm listening to this on audio. I mean, y'all know how Noelle feels about it by now. I think I inserted that clip. I hope I did. If not, here we go. It turns out that every single scene is just twice as long as it should be because of the insufferable main character who just won't shut up and has just the most frustrating internal dialogue, monologue about everything. Like we have to know her little thoughts about every single tiny fucking thing and it just drags on like so painfully also she is the worst because she's like your typical hashtag girl boss smash the patriarchy white girl feminist it's 
constant and unreadable. Every other paragraph she's like, this is why I hate men, but there's no actual conversation about feminism or anything else. Like there's one review that I read that's like, she's the type of person that would have all of these like tchotchkes and coffee mugs that say proud feminist and thinks that's enough. I DNF'd before the sex scene and then when I was reading all these other horrible reviews, someone said that they got to the sex scene and then DNF'd. And so then I was like, well, now I have to see what that is. It's about 60% of the way in and it is possibly the worst sex scene I've ever read. I did not buy the dynamic or romance of the characters. The whole setup and plot of the book, it has potential, but the actual way that it's written is so bad. And the way that the plot unfolds is just so convenient. They really missed the fucking mark. <sighs> I'm getting a little worked up. This is about a small town with witches and this cringy main character who sounds like she is younger than she probably is. I have no idea how old she's supposed to be. I feel like she's one of those that's like trying to be a quirky 30 year old, but she sounds like she's 16, you know? She's a successful indie bookstore owner. I think she just found out that everyone in the town is a witch and they're just like living among humans and we're just like learning the magic behind everything. I'm gonna give it like halfway through and see if I want a DNF or not. Cause if I'm being 100% honest, I would rather be reading things for my cramming vlog portion of this vlog. Cause at some point this weekend, it's gonna transition to purely cramming vlog things. Cause I'm trying to be efficient here. Okay. We only have so many days in the month, but once I finish, we hunt the flame for sure gonna finish this. Don't know if I'm gonna finish this. Stay tuned. I don't really like the writing style. I can see why Noelle hates it. It's a rom-com. It's a witchy rom-com, but it's trying too hard to be funny kind of casual but like in the annoying way you know what I mean I think the audiobooks making it worse too this is like my first witchy book of the year maybe possibly but I feel like this is my karma for trying to start spooky season too early it's never too early but like Noelle hates when people start it too early so I feel like this is my karma if I hate this, this is my karma for starting my witchy season in June all right that was a long ass clip hope that made up for yesterday I'm gonna go read on the balcony oh I also have an alarm for to talk about this jacket because I love it. It's from Halara. Use my code JAM15 for 15% off. Great quality. I roll the sleeves up because it's like kind of hot, kind of cold out. And it's corduroy and it's cute. Okay, bye. Should I hide away forever? Should I close my eyes and never again? Hold you tight, call you mine. Think about you every time. I remember that it's over, yeah You never break, you never lie You never ever scared of the dark So why am I the one who cries? I'm so afraid to be left behind I think about you a lot It's almost like I can't stop Can't stop, yeah, yeah You never lose. A bird, my dudes huh? We got a bird! <laughs> uh, bye. Okay, I chose this mug because it's from Alfred, which is in California, aka Noelle's territory. Everything is intentional in this vlog. Ugh, I got distracted on my phone and it got dark real fast, but I read a decent amount and I cried. I'm 180 pages in and she already made me cry. This book is great. I should have continued it when I first started it. I actually first started this on my phone when I lived in Indiana. So 2019, yeah, sounds about right. I remember being at the gym on like a cardio machine at my Indiana apartment and I had it on my phone from Libby and I started reading it and I was like, like, no, can't read fantasy on my phone. So then I bought the book and then here we are. I have not broken the spine yet. It is pretty floppy. It's been a good time. Chapter 29. From here, it looks like all the chapters are pretty freaking short. Like one page short, one flip of a page short. I'm excited. There are some that are like five pages, but yeah, nothing more than that. This book has 91 chapters and an epilogue. So if that tells you anything. Anyway, I'm attached to these characters. I'm invested. Still waiting on them to face each other. Other. Both main characters are now at their destination. Now they're just trying to kill each other from a distance, but I can't wait for the moment they meet. Is there gonna be more romance? I don't know. Also, this writing, can we just take a moment? There's these little things that Hasa Faisal did not need to go this hard for. Something as simple as this. Nasir gifted him a look that could wither crops. 
She could have said like he gave him a death glare, something like that, but no, a look that could wither crops. The talent, okay? God, I just, can we just talk about, if you know, you know, but this quote, for you a thousand times. Oh my God. All these outside noises are really killing my vibe, but for you a thousand times. Like my fucking heart, man, my fucking heart. Okay, I'm gonna continue. I still have some coffee. It's a little bit cold now though, but I'm having a good night. Like oh my god, there's so many of them. Right, I think it's like fledglings. Maybe it's a murder. A murder. I think that, but I, my guess is those are fledglings. That's why they fed it still. Cool. Wow. I hope we see a cardinal today because the person I'm vlogging this for, like, you know how I'm reading people's worst books uh -huh. that I told you about? Yeah. She loves bird watching and she lives in the West Coast. She lives in California and she never sees cardinals. Yeah, it's good luck seeing the cardinal this time of the year. It's a little elusive, but you never know. I saw one yesterday on our walk. Did you? Oh, yeah. Okay. See? But I didn't have my camera. Oh. <laughs> oh. It just took a shit. Where'd it go? I lost it. There's like a whole family of them up there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look it look it bird watching number two of the day baby <laughs> oh my god look how cute they look are. how orange her feet are don't scare them ah cuties look at the little chickies ducklings not chickies <laughs> oh look at, look at mom protecting while they just bathe this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Made my day. Hi. I didn't update at all yesterday. Because what happened was I was at work and then I felt like shit. So I went home and then I tried to take a nap, but I couldn't. And then I read Happiness Volume 6. Gave it four stars. That's not part of this vlog. So we're going to keep it at that. And then I did take a nap for like two hours. And then I just didn't feel like picking up the camera. So hello, it's now Saturday. I haven't read today yet. Woke up pretty late because we stayed up till like 3 a.m. last night. For absolutely no reason. Because of the nap actually. Small town big magic. I'm 100 pages in and I'm still not vibing with it. I'm definitely gonna unhaul it. I mean the witchy stuff is starting to emerge. I don't know if I'm in the mood for this type of like wannabe quirky. I want one of the first witchy books I read this year to be darker than this. Okay this is a little too lighthearted for me and I don't really care but I'm not gonna DNF it yet but there's a good chance I will. We Hunt the Flame. I'm on chapter 53 and it's still good. It's losing me a little bit but maybe that was because I was reading it a little bit late but we're learning more and more about people's powers the magic system the history of this world what is going on joey's watching tiktok i couldn't tell if joey was watching a tiktok or if a baby was screaming for my neighbors still liking it still loving the characters i'm interested in seeing how these characters relationships with each other develop it's still feeling like a five star for sure today we have some stuff going on i have my all's well discussion at one and then we have some other things speaking of life and keeping things vague. I woke up to more kind of nosy comments and I just don't want to bother with it. And I'm either just not going to respond or your comment goes to this automatic spot in my comment section. Sometimes I don't even see the comments, so there's that. I am at this weird, not weird, this rightful <laughs> mindset of keeping a lot of my life, most of my life, if not all, out of this channel. This is a booktube channel. I'm in that like been there, done that phase where I've talked about my life enough. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want the internet to know things about me, okay? <laughs> Other than my reading. So I'm choosing not to answer or respond respond to questions about my personal life in any way that includes joey okay but no matter what it may be if there's like some traumatic thing or whatever that happens in my life in our life my close friends are gonna know that's that's kind of it but i'm just tired <laughs> i will answer bookish questions and that's it and like where i've i got things i guess but personal life is is gone and that's fine because y'all came here for books ideally and not my life so like who cares at the end of the day who fucking cares <laughs> so that kind of put me in a bad mood 
for the day, but it's a transition for sure. So we're gonna get there because yeah, I love talking about books and that's why I started this channel in the first place. I didn't come here to talk about my life. And I know a lot of people like the whole like mixing lifestyle with books thing and that's fine. There are so many other channels who do that. I don't wanna be that channel anymore. I'll still be, again, it's gonna be a transition. So it's gonna take a while for me to get used to like not talking about work, not talking about my workouts, not talking about Joey, but it's gonna get there. It's gonna happen because it's either that or I quit booktube altogether. <laughs> We're not gonna do that yet. I started this channel for books, so we're gonna keep talking about books. And I love talking about books. And I still have a passion for books, obviously. I mean, I would hope so. I have like 3,000 of them. So it'll be fine, it'll be fun, it'll be cool. Oh, I didn't show y'all my, ah! My latest two library checkouts. <laughs> Better Hate Than Ever by Chloe Elise. I started this on audio a couple months ago, but never finished it. And I love Chloe Elise's writing. I've read, I think four or five books of hers now. What are you doing? Dancing. <laughs> and this is like a hate to love childhood enemies to lovers thing and then i got fruit of the dead by rachel lyons or lion leon it's like sad girl lit fic i feel like whatever that means but it's like a reimagining of persephone and demeter it's set over one summer on a lush private island about addiction and sex family and independence and who holds the power in a modern underworld i was gonna buy this because i love the cover but i figured a library copy would be enough because i'm not a mythology girly so i feel like this wouldn't hit as hard plus the chapters are fucking long so i'm gonna go read now because it's like midnight no nope. <laughs> it's like noon and i haven't read yet so goodbye been a while. I needed that because of this fucking book. I'm 47% through. I don't even know what page. I mean, I'm obviously gonna count the pages I read, but I, I have to DNF. I have to DNF. It's so fucking bad. Not only is it one star if I did finish it, but I would probably actually lose my shit like maybe go into a slump and I can't afford to because I'm doing a big challenge in the first 10 days of July. So I'm listening to Noelle. This one is an agreement. This one is a fail for this experiment. I'm glad I can finally take it off my TBR though, my physical TBR, and just unhaul it. The main thing that annoyed me, I could get past a lot of things, right? I was able to get past the annoying narrator voice, the annoying character, I could little things, but what I couldn't get past is all the stupid writing choices. So when people in the Goodreads reviews, I don't even know where to start, let me just, if you go into the Goodreads reviews and see things like why does the author keep saying that she's a badass instead of just showing she's a badass, believe it, okay? Because there are so many instances where she'd make a statement and then she'd be like, but of course I'm better in this way. She said something about 85% of people being like blah 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 something, I don't know. And then she was like, but of course that just means that I'm 185% better or some shit. And I was like, why do you have to have that extra unnecessary? Necessary shit or at least like reword it to where it's not just like so on the nose like holding your hand type shit And there was one that was something about like her calling herself a badass or no a boss her calling herself a boss Like it would have been harder if I wasn't such a boss or something like that. That is just so bad It's aggravating how bad this writing is and I really don't give a shit about the witchy parts anymore like she's this certain type of witch just trying to figure things out because she didn't even know she was a witch in the first place but everyone else did and they're all hiding among humans and that's about all that i needed to know and she's just like going around this small town asking around to pry for more information but trying not to get caught she just learned what familiars are and what hers is that's all cute and fine but i can't get past her annoyances like and i don't really care about anyone else in the book there's a fine line between a pick me girl that you can like 
tolerate and this where she has to state how cool and better than everyone she is and how smart she is and how much she's accomplished it's like cocky but it's not doing anything you can have cocky but like you're a billionaire you know those types of characters fine like i can have an arrogant character and move past it because that's the point of the character this like what is she doing her ancestors are like some powerful witches i don't know but the way she talks about herself she thinks she's a literal god she doesn't handle conversations well there's just so many unnecessary statements that she makes like under her breath or like in her head or even like two other people sometimes i wish i could think of more examples i told myself to remember more examples but i didn't because i just wanted it to end who's texting me my mom yeah, so I'm just gonna DNF and continue We Hunt the Flame and hopefully finish it early tomorrow, if not tonight. I still have 150 pages left. I'm not gonna use the audio as much as I can avoid it because I started it before and I hated it. It was monotonous. It sounded like the mic was like going in and out. It sounded like it was obvious they were recorded on different days. So I don't want the audiobook to ruin my reading experience. So I'm just gonna keep charging along physically. Tomorrow I do have plans with my girl Sahar. That's at 11 a.m. So I should have most of the day to read and we're gonna hopefully read at a coffee shop anyway i mean we have a lot to catch up on but i'm sure we'll read at least a few pages together so that's tomorrow and then we're gonna end this vlog it's looking good for two out of three at least for my cramming vlog though it's not looking good i mean i read one book that wasn't for this theme which was happiness volume six maybe i'll read volume seven tomorrow but that's like it <laughs> or maybe i'll read multiple volumes tomorrow just finish the series question mark i don't know oh went to the pool sat poolside for like 30 minutes while joey swam so that's one of the things on here i think that's like the last thing i wanted to do for noelle's thingies i'm so articulate today can you tell but yeah i think this is gonna be me bidding you adieu until tomorrow unless something wild happens and we hunt the flame. Oh, I was doing my bullet journal to set up for July whilst listening to this. And then I was like, I can't. I finished my journal, did dishes, and I'm like, I can't do it anymore. There's no reason for me to continue. I made it 47%. This is probably one of the books that I've gotten the farthest into before DNFing. Usually at this point, I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna push through and suffer, but I physically cannot, so. There's that. Good morning, here is the fit. It's spooky. I'm about to hang out with Sahar. We're gonna go book shopping and to a coffee shop just for a couple hours and then come back. Hopefully I finish We Hunt the Flame when I get back. <laughs> and then we're gonna end this vlog because I need to intro my next vlog. I feel so weird. Oh, I got new rings. This one's a vampire fang. Do you care enough to focus? That's a vampire fang. I don't know what this is, but it has some red on it. it has some snakes and stuff. It came with a pack of like, I don't know, 25, and a lot of them don't fit me, so. Love my small fingies. We have the flame. I don't even know what page I'm on. 344. So I have 125 pages left. We're gonna try to read 25 pages with Sahar. Y'all, I recognize her from the back of her head. That's how you know. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> Miss Lawyer. We're going book shopping. Are you vlogging? No. no. I haven't picked up my camera in like once. She is living her best life. Look what she found. Tell him. Tell him how much. Literally $3. $3. Um, the Pango Books girlies are going crazy right now because they're trying to like pay rent with selling one of these books and I just found it for $3. <laughs> they are quaking. And then of course. Yep, that's I mean, my birthday present. Yeah, I've literally read it but I don't own it. I found this. Yeah. And I've been interested. I haven't read anything by Sarah Adams, but I will. I heard this one's really cute. I'm gonna try to get into my sports romance before Anna Huang releases her The Striker, you know? Okay. up y'all because this is it no but actually this is it 
Okay, there was like a little bit of time where I was a little bit confused. There's this whole thing with like the darkness within them and whatever, which I'll figure out upon reread or maybe even the sequel because I'm definitely reading the sequel. The slow burn enemies to lovers in this it is not an exaggeration. Even when the scenes are happening, it's still a slow burn within the burn. <laughs> like, it's wild. Hafsa Faisal's writing, phenomenal, incredible, five stars, top tier. This is a new fave. Noelle, you're wrong. <laughs> You should have given it a chance, ma'am. I have 38 pages left and I'm live, laugh, loving. I think I've committed mentally to reading the sequel in July. Oh, also wanted to mention, I knew I was forgetting something about this book. So another thing that this bitch was saying the entire time, she'd think of something and then she'd be like, yeah, because I'm a warrior. That's what I am, a warrior. And then she'd be like, not only am I a witch, but I'm also a warrior. Like, shut the fuck up. It was so annoying. That was another example of like, tell not show type thing. That's all I wanted to say before I forgot again. I went to my mom's and I got these marshmallows. I was trying to get pastries, but they got moldy. Joey finished a book. I did. Oh, did I show you his shirt? Oh yeah, look at my shirt. It's, it's in like death metal writing. It says lactose intolerant. And then it says it's, my tummy hurts. My tummy hurts. It's got... And they're toilets. I thought they were chef hats, but they're toilets. No ice cream. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> and yesterday we got ice cream whilst he was wearing the shirt. Yeah. It's great. Anyway, he finished his book too. Yep. Chestnut man. Four stars. It was just too long. There was too much unnecessary parts. Dilly dallying. D yeah. Dicking around, but if you will. Cool ending, cool story. Do you still recommend me reading it? Yeah, I think you'd enjoy it. I don't think you'd enjoy it as much as me, maybe, but. Great. That means I'd give it a three. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe it'll waste your time. <laughs> we sat on the balcony for about an hour. Mm -hmm. It was very nice. I'm gonna sit here and finish this book. I did not bring my camera. Well, I did and then I put it back inside But I missed a couple robins just chilling on the rail like the stair rail. So that's unfortunate, but that's okay I got some ducklings and crows in this vlog. That's it? Yeah, I didn't get a cardinal. Oh, I also got I think it was a sparrow Maybe is that what they're called a swallow? What's the difference between a swallow and a sparrow? Okay. I think sparrows are the ones that are like brown and they look like they have eyeliner? I think so. Or is that a swallow? No, swallows Shit. have like, those like cool pointy wings. Oh yes, I, ha I literally have a book called The Swallows and there's one on the cover. Yeah. Look at me, am I an ornithologist? <laughs> In true Noelle fashion, we're watching Shrek. <laughs> I'm here to end the vlog because I just finished a new favorite book. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Let's just like recap. So even though I only read three, which is less than what I read in Gavin's and Kayla's, and I did agree with one of the three. I DNF'd Small Town Big Magic, which Noelle also did. But this is the first Do Your Worst episode, I believe, that actually got me a five-star book. I want to say the highest I've given is four stars to any, any book in this series so far. That is the whole point. That's the whole objective of this series is for both parties to find new favorites within each other's worst books lists. So I don't know. Is this the most successful? Even though it's only two successes out of the three, a new all-time favorite should overpower over... what's the word? It should count for more is what I'm saying. Fantastic ending, as expected. Again, there were a couple chapters towards the end where I'm just like, please tell me this isn't gonna drag on for no reason. But even at the very end, there was another death. There were like three reveals. The plot thickened. I'm so glad I don't have to wait for the sequel. The epilogue was really well done. I just love this writing. I love the romance in this which I didn't think I'd like too much because it, I was expecting not much romance, more fantasy plot, but there was a slow burn in here and I loved it. It's true knife to throat, enemies to lovers. So if you're into that, you'll probably love this. I love how much I tabbed and the colors I chose. I still have this like dull headache behind my eyes and I am struggling. I'm finally done with this. I'm finally done with this vlog. I might squeeze in another volume of manga just to get one more before the end of the month, 
but I think as of this vlog, I'm done. This is wild. I'm so fucking happy. The reveals were so well done. The pacing was great. I think Hafsa Faisal is one of my new favorite authors because I gave A Tempest of Tea a high four star too. Cause the only thing I didn't like about that book was the actual like heist itself. That was like the big selling point for the book was there was a heist in it. I'm very surprised about how much I like this because it took me so fucking long. It took me years to finish this book. Wow. Now I kind of wish my Patreon and I had the discussion. Not a lot of people read it that month and I wasn't in the mood for it at the time, but now I'm in the mood for the sequel. And I really hope Hafsa Faisal comes out with another book next year because I need more from her because I'm sure I'll read the sequel before the end of the year. Loved it. We'll definitely reread this at some point. And that is everything. I'm so excited to see Noelle's portion. I will link it down below. If not, I'll have her channel linked down below for sure and then you can check it out there. I don't know when this video is going up. If you made it to the end of this video, to represent Noelle, let's put the goose emoji because she had, she has, she had, I don't know if it's on hiatus again, <laughs> but she has a silly goose book club. She's my silly goose. You could also put the frog emoji because that's part of her brand. You can put the donkey emoji because Shrek is part of her brand. Is there an ogre emoji? No. Or if you also loved We Hunt the Flame, you can put the camel emoji because there was camels in here. Possibilities are endless for the emoji realm in this vlog. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Do Your Worst. Thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you had a five-star day and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye!